This is Marcus Curtis from Marcus Curtis Music, and we're going to do a getting starting guide for a for the X32 producer. Uh, I have it right here behind me, and this is the X32 producer TP. Now the difference is it's the same mixer, but TP is a touring package. It comes with an anvil case and a cover. So let's get started. Okay, so the touring package has this really heavy duty case that comes with it. Let's take the latches off. This is great if you're out on the road. You just put this right on top of your rack, and you're good to go. And you have this cover too that comes with it. As you can see, it's a real heavy duty case. Okay, we'll put it off. And here's our mixer underneath. So to take the mixer out, I'll show you the bottom side of this case. It's custom made for the X32. As you can see, it fits right in top. You don't ever have to really take this out, but we're going to do a walkthrough of the mixer, so we're going to get the case out of the way. Okay, so here we are looking at the back of the X32 producer. Now, this is a downgraded version from the X32 mixer. The X32 mixer comes with 32 channels, but the X32 producer comes with 16 channels for inputs. Okay, so we have eight in a row here. Then over here we have auxiliary ins. We have uh, eight of those. And uh, you can plug like guitars or keyboards or things like that into here. Then over here, uh, we have uh, auxiliary outs. Then we have eight additional outputs underneath that. Output seven and output eight is reserved for your mains. If you're gonna use this in a recording studio environment, you have two outputs for monitors, and this is for your talkback mic. So if this is in a booth or something, you can plug your talkback mic right into there. Underneath all of this, we have the uh, USB interface card. And uh, this makes the whole thing an audio interface and you can plug it into your uh, Mac or you can plug it into your PC and you can have up to 32 channels uh, of recording at once, 32 channels in and 30 ch 32 channels out. Now this card comes out. You can. You can, there's a screw here and screw here. This card will pull out and you can swap it out with a uh, Firewire card if you want, or you could swap it out with uh, a card that controls the ADAT machines or things of that nature. Um, but those are extra money if you want to go that route. This is uh, where the power uh, cord plugs into and here's your on and off switch. And coming this way, we have uh, a remote. And this is the ethernet. What this does is, you plug into this and then you plug into a uh, router. And once you're plugged into the router, you can connect through your iPad. And you download an app to your iPad. And uh, you can connect to a router and you can control the mixer from the iPad or from your tablet device or from your Android phone or from your iPhone. You can control it or you can plug this directly into your PC or directly into your Mac and you can control the mixer from uh, those devices as well. So that's what that's for. You have uh, MIDI in and out. So if you have some sort of a MIDI uh, controller that you want to use, you can plug it right into here. And then you have an alternate port. The alternate port is a unique thing. It's um, an output for the P16M uh, personal monitoring system. And what that does is you can run that out and musicians can more or less control their own uh, mix and this little tiny package that Behringer makes. Then right next to that is the AES uh, output. So you have a side A and a side B. So let me show you what this does. With the AES outputs you can take the STP CAT5 cable which is a shielded cable and you can plug this box into it. This is the SD16 box and this will just plug in right into one of these ports. Now it doesn't matter if you use an A or a B, you just plug it in any port you want. And what this does is this gives you an additional 16 channels of inputs. And it gives you uh, uh, eight outputs as well. And uh, so now you have as many outputs and inputs as the uh, X32. Uh, you also have uh, more alternate ports on the side here. So you can uh, plug in additional monitoring systems. Now on the side, as you can see, I don't know if you can see that very well. On the side, we're going into side A. 
and you have a side B. And this is so that you can daisy chain these things together. So you can daisy chain them together up to three. And this cable, this initial cable, can be up to 330 feet long. So that means that you don't need a snake. Uh, instead of using a snake, you just drop one of these boxes on the stage somewhere and uh, it prevents you from having to use your 16 inputs on, on the board. So you have a total of 32 now. And this is made to be dropped anywhere on, on the stage so that uh, musicians can plug right into that. And on the side you'll see a, a power switch and, uh, and a power cable for that. Then over on this side is, you see a dip switch. If you do plug in, uh, let's see if I get a better angle. If, if you uh, can plug in more than three, or you can't do any more than three, but if you plug in two or three, you use this dip switch here. Um, then you have a USB, and that's for firmware updates on the box. So if you need to do a firmware update, your USB cable will plug right into that. So that, take this out, and that is it for the back of the mixer. Now let's go ahead and check out the front. So here we are looking at the top of the mixer, okay? These are all the faders, 16 of them total. Now there's two sides to this, these one through eight, these are all your inputs. And one through eight over here, these are all your outputs for the mixer. Here is your master fader right here. So the way you navigate this board is fairly simple. Everything is in groups of eight, okay? So we are right now on channels one through eight. So if we want to say channel seven, okay? There's channel seven. That's uh, six, five, four, etc. This button right now selects it from channels nine through sixteen. Okay, this this button right here, channels seventeen through twenty-four. Now seventeen through twenty-four aren't physically built on this mixer, but these buttons will also control if you have, for example, the SD sixteen. So these sections will control the inputs. On, on that on that device okay so if you're on channels one through eight and you have different types of mixes here then you go to channels nine through thirteen you can have something a little bit different say seventeen through twenty four you know same thing and uh, twenty five through thirty two roughly the same thing okay so every time you hit that channel group but I'm gonna have to switches the faders. Now, if you wanna see 16 channels across, you just hold down this button and this button too, and it goes all the way across, there's your 16 channels. So if you don't have the box, you just wanna see your 16 channels on one view, that's, that's the way to do it right there, okay? So each uh, channel has a solo, of course, and a mute, all right? As you go down, you see auxiliary inputs, one through six, and the USB record, okay? This does record, and we'll get to that here in a minute. This is your FX returns. This is the bus master. This is the outputs one through eight. And this is the bus master outputs one through nine. These are your FX returns right there, okay? So these are, this is the input section. The output section it has a few different features. You have, first of all, the sends on fader. Now this feature allows you to build a powerful dedicated submixes for monitor and second zone feeds, all without affecting the front house mix levels, okay? Now, the X232 producer allows you to send your choice of signals to any auxiliary or output bus and then dial in the perfect mix via the channel faders. Now the console remembers where you set the faders and instantly recalls them when you select a bus for quick adjustments. So it allows you to set a separate mix to the buses. So DCA stands for Digitally Controlled Amplifier, and those are groups allow control over several signals at once without actually mixing them into the subgroup buses. So the XU2 uh, 32 produces eight DCA groups that you control multiple signals via a single fader, such as an entire drum mix, or the horn section, or backup vocals, so you get the idea. The DCA control affects the front of the house mix only, while allowing the individual buses to remain unchanged. Now the result is a customizable workflow that provides maximum flexibility, but still allows individual buses and subgroups to serve the purpose they were intended for. And here's your bus, bus outs one through 
through 2 and bust the outs 9 through 16. The reason why the outs are over here is so that you could select 1 through 8 and 9 through 16. You can see all the way across. Then you have the matrix main view out as well. Okay, so that is the fader section. So this is the channel strip for every input channel on here. Okay, so if we hit channel 1, this is a channel strip for channel 1. If we hit channel 2, it now becomes the channel strip for channel 2. And at channel 3, it now becomes the channel strip for channel 3. We get that, etc. Okay, so uh, no matter what channel you're on, this becomes the channel strip for that channel. Okay, so let's break this down. This is the input section right here. Okay, there's your 48 volt phantom power. Okay, the Midas preamps are uh, really good preamps. They're sensational. Um, we're at zero dB. If you have a signal coming in too too hot, you can actually cut it. Um, also, here's your reverse phase, and here's your low cut. When you hit the low cut, you can select a frequency you want the, the, to cut, so you can really control the shelf that way. And you can, you can see it over here in this little screen. Now, to see anything um, in any section, you have a view button here. If you press the view button, you automatically go to the page that controls this section. So here is a, a gate. Press the view. You're at that section. Here's the compressor. Press that, press the view in that section. Here's your EQ. Press the view. You're in the EQ page. Okay. Here is the um, the bus send, and here's the main out. So all you have to do is press the view buttons to navigate to the page instead of trying to use these buttons and find your location. Okay. So let's go back to the input section, and we'll continue to break this down. So we have the low cut in, and we have the frequency that we can dial in. We can also do it over here. See, you see it move sort of over, over here. So these basically fine tune this section. Okay, I'll explain as we go further on here. Okay, now if we go down here to the gate area, okay, now we just engage the gate, hit the view section, and the page comes up for the gate. And we can control the gate by this little knob here. Now we can control also by here. Uh, your attack, release time, all that kind of stuff is, in, in, is controlled by these knobs right here. Uh, we want to go to the compressor. Just engage the compressor like so. Hit the view button and now we're on the compressor page. And you have threshold, you have attack, you have um, uh, release time, you know, all, all the functions you would find on a uh, compressor are right in here. Okay. Uh, also, we am going to go to the key section, same thing. I'm going to hit the few button that pulls up the EQ page. So, let's see. That's a low frequency there. Okay, right now. Now, uh, you have four band EQ here. You have low, uh, low to mid range, high mid, and high. So, on this, these three knobs and these two buttons will control the low frequency. Go to mid, mid, low, mid. Now they control the low, mid. Now they control the high mid, and now they control the high. So you can change your EQ type by this mode button here. And we have a shelf on the low end, and we have, like say, a bell curve, okay? This is the gain. We can increase it or decrease it. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it on this, but it goes up here. And then we have our bell. We can widen that or narrow it. We can cut it or we can bring it down. And once again, you have these knobs over here that fine tune and adjust EQ as well. Um, the next, after that, we have the output section. Uh, this, this will send a signal to the main fader right there. And then uh, we hit the view and we can see the output section. Here's our pan, left and right. Here's our mono level. If one send it to a monitor, here's a mono level. Here's our mono bus. Okay. And here's the view for the bus sends. Okay. And there's our view for our output section. Okay. This section right in here is our recording section. You see a little USB 
uh, input right here. You put, put a thumb drive in here and we'll hit the view button and you can see you can record your mix onto that thumb drive. Now it's only a two channel recording, stereo left and right, that's it. Uh, it's an audio interface, there's an audio interface on the back that you can plug in, but this uh, USB is only for a thumb drive to record your mix and that's it. But also is the area you would do a firmware update. You would download your firmware and put it on a thumb drive, stick the thumb drive in here and do your firmware update this way. I'll show you how to do that in a later video. And then this section here is the talkback section. And uh, so if this is in a recording studio setup and you have this in a booth, this is what you would use for your talkback section. And of course, this has a view button as well. Okay. Down here are the assign buttons. Okay. And there's eight buttons. Okay. But uh, there are 24 actual assign functions. We'll get to that here in a second. Now, these assign buttons basically work as follows. You can adjust parameters on effects. If you want to adjust the delay tempo, for example, you can have one of them blink and you can do a tap delay. You have to set it up, but it'll be a tap delay if you want to turn off, like say a reverb unit or something. These assign buttons will adjust parameters within the effects. They do a number of other things. So that's the primary purpose. Now there's 24 of, of assignments. And what, what you do is you hit the view button and you go to the view page and you can see there's set A, set B, and set C. So you can uh, actually have three groups of eight assign buttons giving you a total of 24 assignments that you can program within the mixer itself. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a little trick here. This is kind of cool. I like this feature in the mixer. But you can sync two channels together. And let me show you how that works. So I'm gonna take channel one and channel two. I have my uh, Jam Man Looper plugged in to channel one and channel two, left and right. And I can play my song that I've recorded, and you can see the song playing here in the meters. So it's coming in, you can see the input here. I don't need to have the low cut on. But you can see, uh, we're going to do the main out. I'm gonna raise up volume here and raise up the fader over here. Sort of hear the song coming out. Now, go to channel two, go to the main left and right out, raise up the fader. Okay, so to make this sound right, I would pan channel two right and pan channel one left. Um, but what I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to link them together. This is how you do it. Off. Now, all you have to do is go to the view on the input page. And you can see over here there's a little uh, thing for link and you just push down this button and it says, do you want to link channels together? And I want to hit that button for yes. Now both these channels are linked together. Doesn't matter which one you highlight. When I hit the solo, see they both go on. When I hit the meet, they both go on. The faders, Go up and down together. These channels are now linked together. I mean, even the, the pan, this is left right here, and now it's right. Okay, so now when I hit the play, both channels are linked together. That's a really cool feature. So if you're plugged in stereo somewhere and you're using two channels for stereo input, you can link both channels together. If you have guitar effects or pedal boards that have stereo outputs or even keyboards or synthesizers, you can link those channels together. Okay, so this is a song I recorded in the recording studio, just kind of messing around a little bit. And that is it for this tutorial, or this actually walkthrough, quick start guide, for the X32 producer. It's an incredible mixer. It's the best mixer I've ever owned. And uh, I've switched from analog to digital, and I'm still learning stuff about this mixer. But um, if you're looking to go digital, this is a great starting point 
without spending a lot of cash. I know the 32, the XW2 board is gonna cost a lot of money. This is something you can get for a fraction of that. And uh, I highly recommend this Behringer XW2 producer mixer. It's awesome. Thank you for watching. This is Marcus Curtis from Marcus Curtis Music.